Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Cooks by Carrie. If you're new here, I'm Carrie, and for today's Foodie Friday video, I'm sharing how to make this delicious blueberry pie. For today's recipe, you are going to need one cup of white sugar, five to six tablespoons of cornstarch, a fourth a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon ground cinnamon, four to five cups fresh blueberries, um, two pie dough recipes, recipe from my last video if you haven't seen that yet go check it out and a tablespoon of butter also um two tablespoons of lemon juice now when i link the recipe in the description you're going to notice that some of these um, measurements and ingredients are a little bit different from what you're seeing there and that is because i read some of the reviews on the recipe and people gave suggestions saying oh well this recipe was good but i think that this was a great addition so i decided to do those things and also, when I say five to six tablespoons of cornstarch, I mean, I kind of did five, and then I kind of added an extra. So you can do, you know, whatever in there. But yeah, that's all the ingredients. For this first step, I'm combining the sugar, the cornstarch, the salt, and the cinnamon in a bowl and mixing it all up until it's just combined. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my fresh blueberries and add this now powdery mixture to the blueberries and I'm going to mix it up. Now you want to be careful but the thing is if the blueberries get a little bit mashed together it's not really going to matter. I mean at the end of the day a blueberry pie when you eat it it's kind of like mush blueberries all together so if you mash a couple don't worry about it. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the lemon juice to the blueberries. And when I do this, the mixture does become more mushy, I guess. I feel like that's not a very good descriptor, but it becomes a wetter mixture and none of the powder should remain. So mix it up until it's all kind of like a pinky mush. That sounds really gross, but that's like the only words I can think of to describe it. Now it's time to remove the pie dough from the fridge. I failed to mention before, but you want to keep your pie dough in the fridge for as long as it takes to do those previous steps because it is essential to keep pie dough very cold. Also, what you see me here doing in the beginning is I am just, um, this is a wooden rolling pin and I just got off Amazon, I think, but it came with these little things where you can say, okay, um, I want it to be a 16th, an 8th, a 4th, um, 3 8 of an inch thick so it controls the thickness of it um i prefer to use a wooden rolling pin for this type of stuff just because i feel like sometimes um it's a little bit hard to roll out anything that's any dough type thing because it's you know kind of hard from the fridge and so i don't want to i'm a little worried that when i use my marble rolling pin that it might break the counter or break itself so i'm just using one one but feel free to use any okay and for this step, what I'm doing is I'm flouring my surface and then I'm going to roll out the pie dough and get it until I see that it can fill the bottom, the whole pie dish. So this is the bottom crust. Um, it, don't worry if it doesn't all the way cover because the thing is I do end up with leftovers and you can go ahead and with the leftovers fill in any cracks you may have. But you need it pretty pretty big first and you'll see it takes me a couple of attempts to get there because at first it was like a little thin and then it was breaking and all this stuff and also I should mention that as you continue to work with the pie dough the warmer it is the more fragile it is so it is more prone to breaking so just kind of try and work quick but don't worry about it too much anyway as I was trying to say before though that um, because this is a little bit more difficult um, but don't worry if you're a beginner at this, you can totally do this. It's just a little bit, since it, you need to keep it kind of cold, it's just a little bit of a time crunch. But anyone can do this, so don't worry about it. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I was rolling it out, and then I had to restart and like fold it over again, and then roll it out again. So if this happens to you, it should be no problem. Once you've filled your pie pan, I believe my pie pan is 9 inches, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and crimp the edges with a fork. This just kind of seals the dough in so that it won't slip or slide off when it's in the oven or like rise or anything like that. Also, it gives it a nice detail. So yeah, you can just take a fork and go all around all the edges. 
And now it is time to add the filling into the pie dish. When I add it all in, it kind of looks like there's a lot of room left in my pie dish, but actually in the end when I baked it all, it kind of all evened out and um, so don't worry if, like for example, when I was making this, I was thinking, wow, I could have used some more filling in it, but it, it all turned on the end. So even though it might look like not a ton of filling, it's, it's perfectly a perfect amount of filling. Now, the recipe said to dot with butter, dot the pie with butter. I have never heard of this before. I did not know what this meant. So I just assumed it meant take the butter and get it into small enough chunks so that you can spread it out. Now my hands are completely, you know, I mean, they're a little bit floury, but they are clean. Um, you know, I had washed them before I started this. And so I just went in with my fingers and broke it up into little bits. At this point, my butter was room temperature. And if yours isn't, um, maybe just microwave it for a few seconds. Before I continue with this video, please subscribe, leave a thumbs up, comment down below if you'd like to see next, and share this video with a friend. I have a goal of 100 subscribers, so if you could please help me with that, that'd be greatly appreciated. Alrighty, now back to the video. Alrighty. So out of this whole video, this part is the most, um, I don't want to say challenging, but this is a little bit more of an advanced move. This is time to make, I believe it's pronounced a lattice or let, I don't know, it's L-A-T-T-I-C-E, lattice, latest, uh, top. This is kind of that crisscross pattern that you see typically maybe on an apple pie, um, maybe towards Thanksgiving or really any pie. Now, this is, I think, only my second or third time doing it, but the first time it was a little bit confusing, but it is not, it is very doable, so I'm going to teach you how to do it. I felt that when I was trying to learn how to do this, a lot of the things online were just pictures and they were kind of confusing me, so I'm hope, hoping that this is will be a good reference for all of you who've never made a lattice top to teach you how to make it. So what you want to start out by doing is rolling your pie dough out. Now, it doesn't have to be super long. I did mine about a foot long. And um, wideness, you just want to make it wide enough so that um, it's thinner than it when it started. But you don't, it's better to have thicker strips. But I'm not talking super thick. Maybe like, um, I was doing them a sixth or that was the thing on the um, rolling pin. But I didn't roll them all, all the way out. So maybe like an eighth, I don't know, like they don't make them super thin but thin if that makes any sense anyway um as i was saying you just want to roll them out until you can cut strips and then you want to cut off the edges and make them nice and um like a rectangle for the piece of dough and then just cut the strips try and make them about the same um width i think it is like uh, just because if you have some really tiny ones and then some big ones, it'll look kind of funny on your um, pie. And then you can just, you know, in the past I've cut out like a little strip so I can get even lines. It doesn't really matter if you have even lines. I mean, I didn't do that this time and my pie so turned out really delicious looking and I mean, no one's paying that close attention. So it doesn't really matter if they're exactly perfect. But yeah, that's what you want to do first. Now it is time to actually assemble the crust. So basically, this is a pattern. So you want to start by placing a strip all across the top. So you'll see me do that there. So just enough to cover the top, but you want to leave room. And I'm doing this um, just straight on forward in my direction. And um, just be careful not to break them because as you can see like it's okay if they break a couple times but they have to be the length of the pie so you want to be careful there. So between the last clip and this clip I did have to cut some more strips but I just cut that out because you already saw me. Um, you already learned how to cut off strips a minute ago. But now it's time to start with the crust and also sorry if you just saw my phone for a second. My dad was filming some behind the scenes with um, my iPhone. So, to start, you want to pull back every other strip. Now, you see I make a mistake, but I fix it. Don't worry. So, you're pulling back every other strip. It takes a little bit of trial and error, but you want to place another strip underneath and then fold over 
those strips that we just the alternating strips that we just placed down so let me that might have been really confusing so let me let you go ahead and watch what I what I mean by that So hopefully you understood what I was doing there and you can always go back and rewatch um, if you need to. But now it's time to do the alternating step. So here is where I realize my mistake and I fix it. And it's really easy to do. Now at this point also, I do wanna mention that my pie dough was very warm from a lot of touching and you know, it's warm outside so it's a little bit warm in my house. And so you wanna be careful with the pie dough because it's very breakable at this moment. But I'm just going ahead and repeating this process over and over again until the pie is completely filled up and crossed over so i think that i've explained this pretty well hopefully if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments down below and i'll try and answer them but um it's basically just a crisscross pattern so you start all of them down you pick up half the strips place a new strip across put them all back pick up the other half of the strips place a strip down put them back and so on and so on and I've seen some really cool photos of people who've um, done this um, lattice crust so intricately, intricately that the strips are so thin and they've done it all across and it's like so beautiful. So this can really be like a very, you can get creative with it and it's really an art. It's so beautiful. And I forgot to mention that once you've done um, all of the crust, you want to trim off the edges of the crust and crimp all of the edges once more. Now it is finally time to put this pie in the oven. I yet again failed to mention that you want to preheat your oven to 375 degrees. Now my oven is very wonky so don't mine was at 425 but that's just because it's so weird. But I'm going to give you some tips here that they didn't really mention in the recipe. So I would recommend egg washing the recipe when you put it in the oven. Egg washes, it just makes the appearance way prettier, gets um, everything to look golden and nice and beautiful. I would egg wash the top. Basically, you just scramble an egg, um, you know, with a fork and then use like a pastry brush to brush it all over. I would put it in the oven at 375 maybe for like 15 minutes check it and then if it's starting to get like golden and brown and maybe even a little bit burning place a sheet of tinfoil on it maybe reduce the temperature to 350 and then cook for maybe maybe 30 minutes total but check every 10 just because i felt like i mean this could be my oven too so if you want to just follow what the recipe says you can go ahead and do that but um, for me personally, the, so, for some reason, the crust ended up burnt at the, on the edges, but then it was just like a little bit golden brown at the top. I did go ahead and put an egg wash on it after, I mean like um, midway through, but I would just recommend doing what I just said to get the perfect pie. After taking the pie out of the oven, this was the final result. As I mentioned, a little bit burnt on the crust, but it was... Um, little bit goldeny in the center now this is after about an hour after it came out of the oven i took it out i had read some reviews that said that the pie was pretty runny if you take it on immediately so you have to wait at least an hour before cutting it however when i began cutting it it was extremely runny so what i did is i left it in the fridge overnight and then heated it again in the morning and I ate it for breakfast and it was perfect. It had thickened in the fridge. Um, so I would say if you're looking to make this pie, if you're looking to make it for, I mean, any reason really, make it a day in advance. So if you have like a dinner party or a barbecue or something, a day in advance because, I mean, this was like soup. I was kind of disappointed, not kind of, I was disappointed um, at the filling but the day after it was delicious 10 out of 10 would definitely recommend and would definitely make it again if you make it let me know if my tips helped you in the comments down below 
that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. And follow me on Instagram at Cooks by Carrie. I post lots of fun photos of the food I cook and updates and all that stuff. I have a very fun video coming at you the following Monday. It may or may not be a homemade whipped cream video that would go perfect with this pie. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for watching. Bye, guys.